What up, what up, what up world? It's Jason Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I hope all is good on that side of the YouTube channel. It's good to have you here. I'm grateful for you guys to be here. And today I want to talk about a topic that I think deserves a video on this channel. Today we are going to unpack three different ways of how you can accomplish this very super popular enhancement at events like weddings that, I don't know, we've done for like a decade at this point at SCA Event Group. The effect, the enhancement, the service, it's called Dancing on the Clouds. And there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of accomplish this at an event. So today I'm gonna to take you with me to my office. We're gonna kind of look at the three different ways we do it at my or SCE events. And I'm gonna share with you a very cost-effective way to accomplish this. I'm gonna share with you a professional and pretty dope way to do this. And I'm gonna share with you the Mercedes-Benz, the Cadillac, the Jedi kind of exclusive way to do this at events. Now there's three different ways, three different price points. Each one of these services or technologies to accomplish this service has some pros and cons. Whether it be expense, whether it be water on the floor and condensation, whether it be um, power requirements, it's all wrapped up in here and I hope to help you. So if you've ever wondered how we accomplish events and scenes at weddings like this, then this video should help you out. So today we're gonna kick things off evaluating three different pieces of gear. We're gonna evaluate the most common piece of gear which is the Shave Nimbus, which is a low lying cloud effect machine powered by hot water and dry ice. We are gonna look at the Aquafogger 3300, which is a production grade dry ice machine, which is essentially like the Nimbus on steroids, which is also powered by dry ice, a lot of it, and a lot more water. And we're gonna complete this kind of comparison and tutorial with my favorite, which is the Ultratech LSG machine, which is powered with CO2 and a high output fog machine that dissipates super, super quickly. Now, each one of these machines has pros and cons. The Nimbus, super affordable to do, super cheap to operate, but there's a couple things that I guess you need to be aware of before you just jump into this machine. Before I give you the pros and cons, let's take a trip back and let's go back to my office and let's look at this piece of equipment be demoed for your review. All right, guys, we are ready for our showdown, our side-by-side -side comparison, and we are here in my office at SE Event Group in West Long Branch, New Jersey. By the way, if you haven't seen the video that I recorded and shared right here on this channel, I'd invite you to click the link above, jump in and check out how sick this office is. I don't mean to boast about it, but honestly, I'm super proud of it. And the entire team at SCE is super proud of this crazy office that we call home. So we are here kind of simulating a dance floor-like environment at a wedding celebration, doing our side-by-side -side comparison of the three most commonly, or the three best options, I would say, for dancing on the clouds, creating that Cinderella-like effect used by so many people in so many different places. So just to kind of frame it out, we have a 20 foot wide by approximately 30 foot long area that would be representative of a dance floor. We are not gonna launch this stuff from the center. We're actually gonna launch it from this position right here, which would simulate how it most likely would be introduced at a wedding um, being that you wouldn't do it at the center point of our dance floor chances are if you're doing this at someone's event you're off to the side of the event and you're sneaking it around your equipment and you're launching it out kind of like caddy corner like onto the dance floor so we're going to simulate that here and we want to just show you how these machines look side by side the amount of smoke each machine can produce in a quick kind of one scoop, one blast, one um, share, kind of like side-by-side -side comparison.
So here's kind of the issue with the Nimbus machine. If you've ever used it before, you know exactly what I'm talking about and why this presents itself to be an issue. Um, I will go into very shortly, but this right here is the shortfall or the downfall of using the most popular dry ice um, low-lying cloud effect machine known as the Nimbus. Now to take it another step, another step forward, let's look at it at a real event, one of my past events using this machine, one machine at someone's wedding. Now, let's pick it up another level and let me show you what two of these machines look like for one dance at someone's wedding that I've done before. Pretty cool, right? That is the Chave Nimbus machine, super affordable, Super cool. Now the downside to this machine is one, it takes some time for the water to boil. You have to have access to water when you're at an event. If you do have access to water, you have to make sure that you have the ability to let that water boil and you have to kind of monitor it from time to time. It could take anywhere from 20 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on the temperature of the water that you're putting in. Obviously the hotter the better, but that's downfall number two. Uh, number one. Number two is this machine um, has some limitations to it, meaning it's not the best machine if you have a very large dance floor because after you reload the basket twice, it loses its real power. It loses its juice and it's going to fall short of being able to deliver, especially if you have to go over like a three or a four minute long dance and a larger floor. I feel that you're maybe gonna run into some issues there. In the past, we've run into some issues with this machine, specifically when you're at a venue that has the air conditioning or the heating units pointed towards the dance floor where you might get that uplift of clouds. So if you've ever, I guess to relate it to someone, if you've ever seen someone do a first dance and it kind of only gets half of the dance floor, well, that's probably because this machine wasn't powered enough. So generally, when we at SCE use this machine at our events, we use two of them. We use it from both sides of the dance floor and we kapow the first dance from both sides of the floor. So we ensure that we have enough coverage so it looks perfect for that epic first dance photo most couples are looking to get. Just a little tip. Now the third and final downfall to this machine is this machine leaves condensation on the floor. Yup, so if you're working in a place with marble floors, those marble floors are gonna be slippery, they're gonna be wet, and that's caused because you're taking freezing cold dry ice and you're dropping it into water that's essentially super, super hot. You're creating a cloud like you would see in the sky, except it's on the floor. The floor, the cloud itself contains moisture. The moisture kind of goes over the, the flooring and it will leave a film or it will leave a, a little bit of condensation, it'll be a little damp. Now, where this machine first puts the cloud, the area right in front of the unit, that will be very, very wet. That is the biggest downfall of this machine. But on the upside potential, the Nimbus machine is the most widely used machine by most DJs. A lot of people swear by this machine, they love it. You can get this machine for under, I believe, $900 or $800 at this point, and the dry ice to load up the machine will vary from kind of state to state and region by region in the Northeast, but I would feel pretty confident saying that you could probably do a first dance with 20 pounds of, of dry ice, and you can probably get 20 pounds of dry ice in your area for under 50 bucks. So it's a cost-effective solution, doesn't require a ton of power, and it looks pretty dope when it's done right. 
The second machine that we're gonna to review today is the Aquafogger 3300, which is essentially more or less the same operating style as the Nimbus, but it's on steroids. This machine contains a much, much bigger capacity basket and gives you the ability of loading up to 50 pounds of dry ice in comparison to like five or seven or maybe 10 pounds with the Nimbus. It goes into a essentially a garbage can like um, uh, body of this machine that holds somewhere in the area of 40 gallons of water. It's controlled by two 20 amp heaters, so you need power for it. And then there's a pump and a fan. So essentially, if you need this thing to continue running, you need to have four 20 amp circuits at your disposal to make this happen. Now, this machine is something that I bought because at the time of buying this, I didn't have the ability to go to the next level machine, which we're gonna talk about in a second, and I needed to cover greater size dance floors with more coverage of clouds, right? We needed to go bigger, we needed to do more. So this was a solution. Now, you can buy four Nimbuses or five Nimbuses or maybe even six Nimbuses for the price of just one of these Aquafogger 3300s, but these are legit production quality, super professional pieces of gear. These are not like a super common thing, but these are what you would find in theatrical rental companies. This is what you would find in, in theaters or in concerts or places where they need to achieve that dry ice cloud effect at a much bigger scale than the smaller competitor Nimbus machine. Let's rewind, go to my office, and show you what this looks like right real time in our space. So today we are gonna use about 20 pounds of ice just to give you um, a little bit of an idea of what this machine can do. Again, this machine can take on just about 50 pounds in one single load. So we're gonna do about half of what it can do just to show you how powerful this machine can generate a low-lying cloud. Check it out. So you open this machine up, you take your ice source, you drop it in, you shut it down, you latch it over, then you hit your pump and your fan. Now let's take a minute and show you what the aqua fogger looks like on a real dance floor at a real wedding just so you can see how this unit looks. Pretty dope. Now, there are some pros and cons to this unit. Cons would be it's expensive. You're gonna spend just about $5,000 to buy one of these units. In addition to that, you need to make sure that you have access to four, up to four 20 amp circuits just for this one piece of gear for the one effect that you're doing at your event. You also will incur higher costs to operate this unit because it takes more dry ice to achieve that cloud-like effect. The pros are that you have the ability of using a drier ventilation tube or a hose, so to speak, to control and guide the cloud wherever you want it to be. You also have control by being able to turn on or turn off the pump and the fan so that you can stop it real time. That's the one downside that I forgot to mention with the Nimbus before, is once you put that dry ice in the machine, it's really hard to stop it until it regulates itself or the dry ice completely dissipates. With this machine, you have a little bit more control. You can turn things off and you would expect to be able to do it. I think that's a pro and that's a big deal. This machine 
puts out a high volume cloud at a much longer and for a much longer duration than Nimbus and that's a positive for it. You can do more, accomplish more over a longer span of time um, covering more of a floor with this machine than a Nimbus and that's why this is something someone somewhere might want to entertain. Now to complete this kind of comparison and to kind of show you what I'm using now exclusively at my events, we have a bunch of them at SCE. I want to show, share with you the latest and greatest low um, cloud producing machine that we use and that is the Ultratech LSG machine. Now there's a bunch of them on the website and I will put a link to my specific unit and of course a link that you can get your own unit in the comments and description field below this video just so you can kind of check it out. Now this machine is like the Mercedes Benz, the Cadillac of all low flow, low lying cloud producing machines. This thing is total boss. It is total production quality. It is tour grade quality. It is not a toy by any means. Now there are some downsides to it, but before we get into the downsides, let's jump back to my office. Let's show you what this looks like real time in our office space. And there you have it. What you didn't see with that is it even fogged way past the area that we were kind of testing out and it actually fogged behind us too because we didn't use the hose. Now, I had to turn that machine off just after a minute because there was nowhere else for the smoke to go so it was pushing it up really high. That's one of the things that this machine I guess you have to deal with and when you know and understand how to use the machine, it becomes a lot easier. The cool thing about this machine is you don't have to heat up water. You do not have to do anything with the preparation outside of plugging the unit, plugging the unit in. Once the fogger is warm, which takes less than five minutes, you are good to go. When you keep the machine plugged in, it maintains the temperature of the fogger so you don't have to go through a heating process and you are able to disperse low-lying clouds numerous times over the course of a celebration. Generally, one 25-pound tank is more than adequate for up to five minutes. And when you use a 50 tank, you can, or a 20 pound tank is up to five minutes. When you use a 50 pound tank, you can use this machine anywhere between uh, seven and 15 minutes. So that's a lot of opportunities to use this machine more than one time. The best part of using that machine, I wanna show you really quick, unlike any of the dry ice solutions is there is absolutely no water on the floor. It's totally dry. Normally when we use the machine, we use it with the hose, it gives us the opportunity to control it, to make waves, to move things around, to maybe focus in on an area where the, the HVAC in the venue might be pushing the clouds out of the way. Whatever the deal is, this is the kind of unit that you don't have to worry about if the air conditioner is on, and this is gonna just body every other machine 
and of course you would expect that with the investment needed to purchase one of these machines. Now, unlike the other two machines, the Nimbus and the Aquafogger, this machine is not powered by dry ice. It is not powered by dry ice, no dry ice. And I think that is a positive for sure about this machine. This machine is actually powered by CO2. Yes, you have to have a tank in order to operate this machine. Essentially, the way the machine works is it takes an input from the tank, high output cylinder style CO2 tank, funnel CO2, which is freezing cold into the machine where it is met by a partnering Ultratech high capacity fog machine, high output, high capacity fog machine that has also been partnered with very quick dissipating low lying fog juice and the, the the fog machine takes the juice and creates a fog cloud pumps it into the machine where it is met by a co2 line from the co2 tank the fog is then frozen and it is pumped out of the lsg now this machine is total boss first and foremost, the output from this machine is like tremendously greater than the Nimbus and the Aquafogger 3300 on steroids. This is a very high output, high volume, totally controllable piece of gear. This gear can do large dance floors. As a matter of fact, I just did a wedding last weekend and we didn't just cover the dance floor, we went far greater than the dance floor and almost covered the entire ballroom with this uh, machine and it happened in just a little bit over a minute and a half. This machine is super powerful and I think it is the perfect solution, especially if you're doing events in very large venues or places where dry ice is not permitted for whatever reason. There's a lot of places that don't even allow you to use dry ice machines because it's a liability or an insurance liability for them. People have gotten hurt, they've sued, whole big thing, whatever. Now, this LSG machine is a total boss. It allows you to do a lot very quickly and it allows a company, um, allows a, someone producing the event to essentially control the unit and the cloud very, very easily. See, in order to operate this machine, you need to, one, have the partnered uh, fog machine. You need to have the proper solution for that fog machine. You need to have a CO2 tank. You need to have a fairly expensive hose to operate it. This hose that we use actually came with the unit. You have to buy it separately, but it's just about a thousand dollars or maybe a little bit over just for the hose. And if that wasn't all, you have to use a DMX controller to make this happen. Yes, you can connect it to a Show Express or a piece of software. We found that although that's great, um, I think going with an old school slider controller, rather simple controller, um, you would think is actually not the right way to go, but we found it to be the best way to go. This machine absolutely smashes and it's what I use. now. The pros, there's no condensation, there's no liquid, there's no wetness on the floor anywhere with this machine. Um, the cons would be, yeah, you gotta, see, you gotta bring a CO2 tank, you have to make sure that you are abiding by all of the production rules on using CO2 and bringing tanks into a venue. You need to make sure that you understand how to operate the machine. Um, it is a high volume machine, but you have total control, so you can like bring it way down. Um, a pro to this, not a con, but a pro to this would be that if you're using a 20 pound tank, a smaller CO2 tank, you can easily get through a four or five minute first dance. If you are using a 50 pound tank, then you can use this machine a number of times over a wedding celebration span or an event span. So you could use it for like the first dance and then even perhaps cake cutting or an all couples dance, or you could just do a spotlight dance later on. You could use it when you introduce musicians. 
kind of like unlimited with this machine with a bigger size tank. You can do a lot more with it. Because there's no condensation on the floor, it's not something that you're gonna to have to worry about in terms of liabilities or insurance or safety. And I think that alone is one big reason why I personally use this machine at most of my events in comparison to the other machines. Now, some downfalls would be this machine is giant. It's super heavy, it's very, very big, it's easy to move around when you have it in a road case, but it requires you to have a large truck, a large van, a trailer, a box truck of some way of getting this piece of equipment from your warehouse or from your storage or from your garage or for wherever you keep your equipment to the venue. So if you have stairs, this machine is gonna be tough. If you don't have a way to easily access a room, this machine is going to be tough. Outside of that, I think the biggest downfall to this machine and why most people don't use this machine or might not even entertain using this machine is the investment to own this machine. You have to buy the unit, you have to buy the, the fog machine, you have to buy the solution for the fog machine, you have to buy the hose um, to come out of the machine, you have to buy a DMX controller. If you don't own tanks, you need to buy tanks. And the investment for this machine could be in upwards of twelve and a half to thirteen thousand dollars just to buy it. Wow. Now, when we talk about the business of running these things, there are all different fees that people use for um, these services at their events. I will say that the biggest machine generally is sold to our couples for more than double what the first machine is. And the second machine is definitely a higher price point than the first machine, but it's not as high as the last. Regionally, state to state, things are gonna vary. I've seen a lot of people throwing in clouds just to earn business. I've never really been a fan of that. I think when you consider all the time getting ice, getting tanks ready, making sure things are troubleshot and, 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 and troubleshooted properly and and, and tested when you get the loading and you get the transportation to and from, there's a lot of costs that most people don't think of outside of the five minute song that they're gonna use that service for. So my advice to anyone when considering any one of these machines is look at the, the total picture. Are you able to operate it yourself or with your existing team? Do you need to bring additional resources on to operate this equipment? If so, you need to rethink how you're pricing these units and then outside of that, how easy is it for you to fill up a CO2 tank or to get 20 or 50 pounds of dry ice or whatever you're gonna do for one of the other machines. If your answer is very easy, super, you know, doesn't really interact or mess up my day, then your pricing structure might be very different than someone that has to drive an hour to get dry ice or spend three hours of time filling up tanks every two weeks or whatever. Um, I mentioned that because regionally and state to state, area to area, market to market, things are gonna vary. So if I say that, hey, I rent this big machine for $1,500, some people in other parts of the country might look at that and say, you're absolutely crazy, they're not even hiring my DJ service for that, and that's okay. Um, the larger machine actually for me rents at a, starts the rental at a, um, provided that service if they have other services with us like DJ and everything at a thousand dollars. It is an investment to have this machine, but I believe that there's value there. I believe that you don't have to worry about um, issues with safety and insurance. And also if that wasn't enough, there's no condensation everywhere right it looks perfect you could do more with it use it more than just once at an event and it kind of sells itself in comparison to like some of the cheaper options not that they're bad by any means i just think you have to be careful so if you're using an imbus at an event or using an aquafogger try to make sure that when you do put the cloud onto the dance floor you're not putting it right onto marble put it onto a piece of carpet make sure that you bring rags or a squeegee or maybe even a small uh, runner that you can put that onto before it gets onto the floor. That'll save you the initial brunt of condensation hitting that dance floor and alleviate a lot of issues for you. This is just one idea. Another thing is if you're gonna use maybe the Nimbus at your event and you have a larger area, 
I absolutely hate when people can't get the job done properly. So if you're going to quote using this type of equipment at your events, consider bringing two machines. If it's a larger dance floor or a larger venue, if it is going to be humid or humid or however you say humid out at the day of the event that you're doing, take that into consideration because your dry ice, dry ice might not be as effective. These are all things to think about and consider. Now, I'd love to hear from you. If you're doing this at your events, if you're experimenting or you're thinking of doing it at your events, drop down below, leave a comment, let me know what you're using, how you're using it, what you like, what you hate. If you found value in this video, I don't care, anything goes, drop down below, let's get the conversation started. I promise to respond to everyone who takes the time to leave a comment. I appreciate you guys checking out this video. Be on the lookout for another video dropping very, very soon on this channel, and I will see you guys then. Thank you once again, and we will see you real soon.